Hello, welcome back to On Living Well. Back in September of 2023, I turned 30 years old, and that's wild. I think growing up 30 was that age. I felt like 30s was like the prime of living. 40 felt like starting to get old, and 20 felt like learning to be an adult slash being adult. But I digress. I actually had a phone call with a buddy of mine the other night who is 23 and we talked through a lot of stuff regarding career specifically and I wanted to hit on some of that today. It was a really good conversation. We talked for almost an hour about where he is in his career and sort of the hesitations he has trying to navigate where he wants to be and set himself up for the next 10 years. And though I'm not a pro and though I've been in a specific field of advertising and marketing, basically since I left college, I've still had a lot of struggles in trying to find my way of where I see myself over the next 10, 20, 30 years in my career. And I just wanted to share that with you and just offer some maybe words of wisdom. I'm not the smartest guy, but I am 30, so if you're 20, I've got 10 years on you, if that means anything. And just give some advice and some, I guess, reassurance. The first thing I wanna say is, like, when I was 20, still in college, I had a band. I, outside of the band, I had no idea. I really was serious about the band. I wanted to make it work. It was called the band Concord we were doing well, went on a summer tour with an agency and they, it, it doesn't matter. After we all graduated, I had to get a job. I was in the communication field in college and that was literally because I heard it was easy. I didn't mind the curriculum and it allowed me to focus on the band. Luckily for me, I was really enjoying marketing the band and learning how to use social media to do that and learning how to network and promote an album and speak to an audience both on stage but also through various marketing channels. I didn't realize I was doing marketing, but I was. And so luckily communication is a field that can go into marketing. A lot of times if you're applying to jobs in the marketing field, they'll say a degree in marketing or communications preferred. And so I got into marketing and I was really into photography, videography, building websites, and wanting to do that for companies around town. Long story short, after a year at an executive search firm as a digital marketing manager, I started my own company, creating websites and doing videos and stuff, which then morphed into my own social media company with a partner that I pulled in. Uh, from there, we actually joined one of our clients full time. It was a local uh, healthcare startup called Agenicare. It was where the doctor comes to you, like in the old days. And I worked there for a couple years. And I really found a love in owning my own business and working at Agenicare for not only marketing and advertising, but building and structuring business, working through processes, working with teams, understanding each part of a business from marketing and advertising and sales to operations to financial and how that all works together, I fell in love with that. And so when I joined my current job, Leisure Media, I was pulled on to start the digital advertising department here at this agency. And so it allows me to both flex and use my marketing advertising muscles, but also my business building muscles and the operations side of things I enjoy. So I, it seems now looking back that it was a natural progression to get where I am today. But I will say from the very start, I had no idea. I was just following interests and seeing what that led to. And honestly, thanks be to God that I've wound up where I am. I love my job. I love creating content on YouTube and having the freedom to do that in my job. I think getting back, so that was a long story about just me and my background to maybe give some credibility or something, I don't know, or maybe to help relate to, it seems looking back that it was all carved out. And I think it kind of was by God, but I didn't know in the moment where I was going and where I would end up. And I didn't even know where I wanted to go or where I wanted to end up. I've just naturally fallen here by asking questions, talking to superiors, 
learning how to network a little bit. I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. And so walking into a room full of people and networking is not something that appeals to me or something that I'm good at. I've learned over the years, and I think in my 10 year span from 20 to 30, and even now, I've just grown up. I've become more of an adult. I've become more comfortable in going into a room full of people and networking or in getting, asking someone to a one-on-one -on -one meeting or coffee. Here's my dog joining us. Hey buddy, you need a haircut. Can you either leave or sit down or something? Thank you. So anyway, I, I think some comfort there is I, I think when I was a kid, I never thought I would be the type of person to be an extrovert. I didn't know what that meant. I just knew I was uncomfortable in social situations. I never thought I would get there. And I think just time and wisdom and age has brought me to a place where I'm a little more comfortable with it. There's that. Hopefully that's helpful. And then I, I wanted to talk specifically about my buddy's like career and where he is. He's in sales. And it's hard to speak on this topic of like career and cover everything. You could be a pastor, you could be a marketing person, you could be a doctor, you could be a limousine driver, you could be a social media influence. Like I can't obviously give advice on all of that. And honestly, I think in sales, I don't have a lot of experience either and I don't really enjoy sales. But I think when we're talking like corporate or business related kind of work, and maybe this can apply to really anything, I'm not sure. But in talking to him, I think he quickly joined into a small company, which I did as well. And when you join into a small company with no experience yourself, there's not a lot of people, unless like that company just has like a great mentor to you or something, there's not a lot of people in that company, even if they have advice to give, they don't have time to give it. And so you can't really be trained well unless the company also maybe has some great outsourced training program or something. So when you enter a small company, you have to do a lot of self-learning and you have to trust what you're learning without a knowledge of if it's going to work, if it's been proven to work, if it works in your specific com company or industry. And so something I was talking to my buddy about is maybe a next step for him is to join a larger company because when you join a more corporate environment, it might not be the flexibility and the fun that comes with working at a startup or a small company or working for yourself, but you do a lot of learning. There are trainings that are set up in processes where you go through the training, you learn the skills, then you go out, you practice those skills. There's also people who have been there longer than you that can mentor you, who can just be in the same room with you, maybe go on sales calls with you, whatever the position might be. I think me growing up, I never wanted to join a big company. I thought startup life, being in a band, whatever it looked like was gonna be working for myself being independent and being in a cool environment, selling cool products or marketing cool products or whatever it might be. But looking back, and I don't even know if past Spencer would listen to current Spencer's advice. If I could have plugged in at a company and learned on a fast track my skills, and then after a couple years, take those skills and then maybe try to plug in at a startup or a smaller company, I feel like that's a good route to go. And I feel like it's the way I view college as well. So let me explain. I know this video is running long. I've been doing a lot of thinking about what college is. Should I send my kids to college? Should I make them go to college? Should they have a choice? And I still don't know the answer to that yet. But what I can say is I think from a high level approach, if you know what you want to do, when you're like 18 and you're about to go to college or not. And if college is going to help you do what you wanna do, that's a good reason to go to college. If college is not gonna help you do what you wanna do, it's a good reason not to go to college, but you have to be like 100% sure. And that's the hard part. I'll also say if you don't know what you want to do, I think college is a great place to go because you get into this environment of other people your age learning 
skills and working on things. And in a way you can network, see what others are doing, find maybe a major that really interests you in sort of a discovery year, which obviously that costs more money. I think Casey Neistat once said to really know what you're passionate about and what you want to be doing with your life, you should go get a job that you hate because the whole time you are doing that job, you're going to be thinking of the thing that you wish you could be doing. And I think that's fantastic. And I think that happened to me in my first year of being in the working world. I was working at an executive search firm, firm learning about marketing myself because there was no one there to teach me, digital marketing specifically. And I didn't care about recruiting. I didn't care about executive search. And so every day I would go in there and try and do my job, but also be like, man, I want to start my own company. I want to use these skills I've built up. To, to follow this passion, to help companies in the area and then build up those skills. And then if ever I need to go join another company, say my, my company isn't doing well and I need to go work for someone, I'm not going to have skills that don't apply anywhere. I'll know how to work with clients. I'll know how to make great videos, make great websites, make great photography, how to implement those things on social media. Like I was self-learning skills that I could, if I had to go plug in at a company, and honestly, that's what happened. So just some comfort is I feel like your 20s is a very explorative time, which may be very obvious to you. I'm not sure. But I got married when I was 23 and I had my first kid at 20. Is that right? Married at 23, 25, 2017 was five years ago. Yeah. Married at 25. I can't do the math. You do the math for me. I got married and had a kid in my 20s. My daughter's three now, so I had her when I was 27. So throw family and a kid into the mix. It makes things really hard, and the pressure's there. And we had my daughter when I was still working for myself, like I had my own company, and that was scary. And I was leaning on my wife's teacher salary, honestly, to, to give us that stability and that expected income. I wouldn't change anything about the last 10 years of my life sans some problems I had personally, but career wise, family wise, kids wise, it has been a fantastic life. And I know that it doesn't shake up that way for everyone, of course, but it's been great. And I guess the long and short of it is if you're in your twenties, if you just turned 20, just learn. Don't be discouraged. Don't feel like you have to make $200,000 when you're 21 years old. That'd be great if you knew exactly what you wanted to do. You knew exactly how to go after it and learn the skills you need and then apply those skills and then ask for raises or work for yourself and get a bunch of clients. But you really have to know exactly what you want to do. And I, I honestly don't think I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I still don't know 100%, but at least I know the field that I'm interested in marketing, advertising, and also building business. So maybe on the agency side, I didn't know that till two years ago, that was where I wanted to be. And in fact, when I started my job at my current job, I was still unsure if it's what I wanted to do. So I was 28, 29, 30 before I really started to understand what I wanted for my career. All that said, I hope this is a little bit encouraging. I don't think there's any cookie cutter way of doing anything in life. I think the, the closest thing is if you say, I want to be in sales, period, then go join a larger company and learn the skills from training and also the people above you. And then you can get into, now I want to do sales in the tech space and I'm going to go join a startup. We're going to try to join a startup and use my two years experience and those credentials of what I was able to bring in sales wise with my new skills and see if I can apply that to a different industry or a different situation. You have time when you're 20, when you're in your 20s. Even adding a wife, a spouse, kids, you have time to figure things out. And yeah, I'm here for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really love making these videos and I hope they're helpful in some way, shape or form. So yeah, I appreciate you for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one.